Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, gloria a Dios. Hallelujah. Can you stand this morning? Hallelujah. Puede aplaudir al Señor esta mañana. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning? Hallelujah. Celebrando a Jesucristo. Celebrating Jesus Christ. Celebrando al Rey de Reyes. Celebrating the King of Kings. Al Señor de Señores. The Lord of Lords. Al Alto y Sublime. The Almighty. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. La Biblia dice en 1 Timoteo 3:16. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 3:16. E indiscutiblemente grande es el misterio de la piedad. Dios fue manifestado en carne, justificado en el espíritu visto de los ángeles, predicado a los gentiles, creído en el mundo, recibido arriba en gloria. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in flesh, Hallelujah. justified in the spirit. Seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. Predicado a los gentiles. Preached unto the Gentiles. Creído en el mundo. Believed on in the world. Recibido arriba. Received up. En gloria. In glory. En gloria. In glory. En gloria. In glory. Él está en gloria. He Hallelujah. is in glory. Y su pueblo, in his church, su iglesia, in his church, tiene su gloria. Hallelujah. We have his glory. La gloria de Dios, the glory of the Lord, está esta mañana en este lugar. Is in this place today. Así que esta mañana, so this morning, vamos a cantar. Let's sing. Vamos a aplaudir. Let's clap. Vamos a exaltar. Let's exalt. Vamos a poner en gloria a Let's nuestro Señor. Put our Lord in glory. Alabe su nombre. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Amen.
What a privilege to be in his house. What an honor to be in his house. Anybody come here looking for something this morning? Anybody have a need in the house? Came to church this morning thirsty. Came hungry. Came desperate for something that you can't find anywhere else. Maybe you've tried everything else already and it didn't work. Amen. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer. If we could all just stand together. If you're seated, if you would stand. And we're going to continue to pray for Sister Linda Brown, Sister Lisa Johnson, and Sandra Stallworth as they're needing uh, healing in their body. Some a cure from cancer for Kylie Ray needing healing. Also, Sister Stacy McClary, she needs a touch in her body and recovering from surgery that she had. Also, um, Sister Lakeisha Moore asked for prayer this morning, so we're going to remember her as well. A lot of times we come into the presence of God and we're desperate for something. How many of you, what, what originally brought you into the house of God, a lot of times is a very desperate situation? I came into the church because I was missing something that I could not find anywhere else. I had tried everything else, but I, I found myself here. A lot of times it's a desperate situation that brings us here into the house. How many of you remember the story of the king Hezekiah? The king of Assyria had brought up a threat letter against the kingdom. And Hezekiah, he didn't know what to do on his own. So the Bible says that he brought that letter into the house of God. He had done everything that he knew to do probably already. And the Bible says in verse 9, I'm um, sorry. 2 Kings chapter 19 and verse 14 says, And Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord. And he spread it before the Lord. That's the key. That's really all we have to do. He didn't look for an answer in any other man. He went into the house of God and he spread it before the Lord. And the Bible says that Isaiah, the man of God, came with a word for him. And God fought the battle for Hezekiah himself. I wonder if there's anybody here this morning that would signify a need by the lifting up of your hand. And can we bind together in prayer this morning believing that it's enough just to bring what I have need of and to lay it before the Lord in his house. I believe there's a word here for somebody this morning. I believe there's healing, there's deliverance, there's an answer to your need and you're here in the right place this morning. It's time to lay it before him. Would you help me pray? Would you lift your voice? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning with faith. I'm really not interested in trying anything else this morning. I'm bringing what I have. I'm bringing my need before you. And I'm believing by faith that you are able. We are binding together in prayer. The Bible says that where two or three are gathered together, you're here in the midst. It's a promise that we have, and we've gathered together in your name, believing that you can do the impossible. For those that are looking for deliverance, strength, for healing in their body, a financial breakthrough, whatever the need is, God, we bring it before you, and we're laying it at an altar. And we're asking for your divine help. I don't know what to do outside of you. I don't have another answer, but I know that you can fight the battle for me. I know that you're willing, that you want to, and that you're able. So we're praying by the authority of the name Jesus and by the power of the Holy Ghost that you would break every stronghold, that you would minister to and heal and, and touch every broken body, everyone in need of healing, that you would minister God deliverance to those that are held captive this morning. Strengthen. We curse depression in the name of Jesus. We come against anxiety in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray it. Can we worship together this morning?
this building, every hand lifted. The Holy Ghost is in the room. You have family members that are lost. You have family members that are backslid. But the Spirit and the presence of the Lord is in the house right now. So right now, under the unction of the Holy Ghost, I pray the Holy Ghost fall over you and over your family, over your children, and over their children. up our tithes and offering we need to if we could stand we need have a few that uh, have put in a prayer request and uh, brother and uh, myself and brother jet were not able to connect but uh, Don Ritter is in the hospital and he's asked that we remember him in prayer also the Thrasher family and the Riles family uh, Jerry Riles passed away and I know that they just suffered a death here recently so we want to remember them in prayer and also Linda Brown's going to be having surgery again on the 29th of July we need to remember all of them in prayer amen can we just raise our hands and ask God to touch each and every one of these circumstances Heavenly Father, we come boldly before the throne of grace because, God, you're a prayer-answering God. Heavenly Father, we pray for Don Ritter, Lord God. We pray most of all, Lord God, uh, that he is in right standing with you, Lord God, as he's in the hospital. And God, we ask that you would lift him up. We pray for the Thrasher and the Riles family, that, God, you would comfort them, Lord God, as they mourn. Lord, we also pray for Linda Brown that, God, you would touch the hands of the surgeons, Lord. We ask that, God, first and foremost, you would heal her today so that she doesn't have to have surgery. But, God, we trust you because you're an all-knowing God. And we thank you that we can rely on you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can we give them another hand clap while we sit? Hallelujah. We're going to ask our ushers to come. And recently I was reading a little story uh, about a four-year-old little boy who wanted to give his father a birthday present. And uh, he looked for a way to express his love. And because he was so creative, he went to his father's closet. He looked around and found a tie that he really liked. And he took it off of his father's tie rack. And he wrapped it up and he presented it to him with a happy birthday, Daddy. 
And I thought about that, and I thought, you know, that's exactly what we do when we give to God. We take something that God has already generously given to us, something that already belonged to Him, and we give it as if it was ours in the first place. And He's so kind to accept the offering we give. You know, He delights in the gifts we present, even though we couldn't give anything if He did not give it to us first. Scripture says in Psalms 24 and 1, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. I want you to know this morning that God is the creator and governor over all. But he loves it when you and I give to him from the goodness of our hearts, just like he did to you and I. Can we bow our heads and pray this morning? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you alone satisfy our every need and the desires that we have in this life. Lord, your word commands us to give as we honor you with the first fruits of our giving this morning. And we ask that you accept our tithes and offering as our gifts, as an act of love to you. Multiply what we give for the growth of your kingdom. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Don't you love to hear the hand clap of everybody in the church clapping together? Wandering into the night Wanting a place to hide this weary soul This back of bones And I tried with all my mind but I just can't win the fight I'm slowly drifting A vagabond And just when I ran out of
Now some of you were buried so deep in sin that there wasn't a shovel big enough to dig you out of it. But all of a sudden one day Jesus decided that he was going to die on Calvary. And when he did, they buried him in a tomb and three days later he rose again. There was another man by the name of Lazarus buried in that tomb. And he told him to come up out of that grave. For those of you that feel buried in depression, sin, anxiety, it's time to get up. So get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. brother and sister Drost with us. Amen. And uh, just a reminder that they will be in Spanish service today ministering at six o'clock. We'll invite everybody back. We'll be at six. Uh, brother and sister Drost will be with us then also. Amen. It's good to have him with, with us. Uh, he is the bishop, president of the United Pentecostal Church of Mexico. Is that correct? Did I say that correctly? Amen. Sister Dross is the ladies director of the United Pentecostal Church of Mexico. Amen. He's pastoring, I believe, in the Central Church of Mexico City. Also has daughter works and right now also I think Guadalajara. Guadalajara, right. Not the restaurant. The real Guadalajara. <laughs> and uh, it's great to have them with us. I appreciate their spirit. Interacting with them and meeting them at camp meeting and then just spending some time with them yesterday. Just wonderful people of the Lord. Amen. And, and have a burden for God. So this time I'm going to turn the service over to them. And uh, let's just say God bless Brother Dross as he comes and ministers. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's such an honor and a privilege to be here today. And uh, I can most definitely concur with the psalmist when he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. And there's no 
better place I'd rather be on Sunday morning than right here with God's people, praising God's name and in his church. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Um, I, I just want to say at the outset, thank you uh, to the church and also to your, uh, your good pastor. Amen. Brother Shepherd. Uh, that evangelist quarters, I, I like to call it missionary quarters. Amen. It's just so beautiful. Amen. Um, I slept like a baby last night. Amen. Woke up every three hours looking for mama. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> but uh, God, God is good. Can you say praise the Lord? Uh, we're currently missionaries to Mexico, as, uh, as Brother Rodriguez uh, said. And God is doing tremendous things in Mexico. Mexico, of course, is the largest Spanish-speaking country in the world. And it borders the second largest Spanish-speaking country in the world. And that's the good old USA. Amen. Hallelujah. More people speak Spanish in Mex in U.S. than in Spain. So, yeah, I mean, they're taking over. Hallelujah. So you might as well learn how to speak Spanish now. Hallelujah. And God is doing tremendous things. The Bible says we ought to love our neighbor as ourselves. And Mexico is our neighbor to the south. And we ought to, every single time you pray for for America, you need to pray for Mexico as well. Uh, how many like Mexican food? Yeah, amen. How many like Taco Bell? Yeah, that's a Mexican phone company. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, anytime you, you're eating at Taco Bell or Mexican food, just pray for Mexico and say, God bless that the good looking missionary in Mexico. Amen. That you may not know my name, but that's who I am. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. But God is doing tremendous things. I just want to very quickly share some statistics with you. The United Pentecostal Church of Mexico has been established uh, for uh, about 30 years, uh, 29 years actually. And um, we have 37 districts, but uh, we have 103,649 baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. We have over 1,000 pastors, over 1,000 churches. Last year, 2020, everybody say 2020, uh, just 2020, and that's with all the shutdowns and whatnots. Amen. We had 10,746 get the baptism of the Holy Ghost for the very first time. Amen. Uh, we had 13,399 that got baptized in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And uh, to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Just uh, 23rd of May. Everybody say 23rd of May. Uh, that was Pentecost Sunday this last year. And uh, in all total in the whole country, on Pentecost Sunday, 2,544 got the Holy Ghost for the very first time. And uh, you're a part of that. Can you say praise the Lord? And I want to thank this church for being our partners with us now for 11 years. Amen. And uh, I think this is my first time here. I don't know. Hallelujah. But it's certainly uh, certain, uh, a very memorial time. And, uh, and so we covet your prayers. Amen. I've been working in Guadalajara, Jalisco. Everybody say Guadalajara, Jalisco. <laughs> yeah, see, that's how so many people get the Holy Ghost down there. Amen. Uh, but previous to that, I was, I was working in Reynosa, Tamaulipas. Say that, Reynosa, Tamaulipas. Yeah. It's right across the border from McAllen, Texas. And it's, I mean, it is hot there. I mean, really hot like 115, 160. It's, it's, it's so hot, chickens eat ice cubes so they don't lay hard-boiled eggs. That's, yeah, that, that's how hot it is. And uh, I got me a Ford truck. Amen. God bless Ford. Nobody said amen, but it's true anyhow. Hallelujah. Stands for first on race day. Amen. And uh, what I, I, it's a big old Ford truck, dually, uh, double cab. And, and what I do when I started there in Reynosa, it's a very dangerous city. 
on account of being a border city. It's, it's one that's fought over cartels and, and all. And, um, and so what I, what I, when I went there, I started just, uh, I, would get, I got this horse trough and put it in the back bed of the pickup. And I'd go to a park and put the tailgate down, start preaching off the back of the pickup. And then if anybody wants to get baptized, then they get in the cab. That's why I got the limo tent windows in there. They change their clothes. They get out, get in the back bag of the pickup, get in the horse trough. I baptize them in Jesus' name. Then they get out, get in the cab, change their clothes, and off they go. <laughs> See, that's a Ford Pentecostal baptizing machine. Amen. That's why everybody ought to have a Ford truck. Amen. Praise God. But uh, in 2006, when Osiel Cárdenas was apprehended by the Mexican military, uh, he was, uh, you know, a pretty uh, powerful man. Uh, the Gulf cartel split in two and causing uh, a war. And it got really dangerous in Reynosa when both cartels were fighting over that. And sad to say, a lot of young men are drawn into that environment more than anything because there's a lot of money and they rather live two years with lots of money and die or whatever but uh so one of the ladies in our church she asked me pastor uh could you go pray for my son he's been he's been apprehended and is in prison in a federal prison she said uh the name and um, i said yeah no problem you know never been to a federal prison before i thought yeah i can do that and so I took my two assistant pastors, amen, kind of like Brother Rodriguez, amen, hallelujah. Um, and I had to drive about six hours to get there. And when I arrived there, um, I, told, I told the guy in charge, I said, my name is, you know, Pastor Dross. Uh, I've come here from Reynosa. I want to go pray. And I mentioned his name. And uh, so uh, what do I have to do? And he was just kind of looking at me. And uh, he said, um, uh, let me understand something, Pastor. You actually want to go inside and pray for somebody? I said, yeah, that's, that's the whole idea, absolutely. He said, oh, man, let, let me explain how this works. We don't get paid to keep order inside the prison. We just get paid to prevent them from getting out. So if you go in there, you're you know you're uh, at your own risk and if there's a riot or something breaks out we won't be able to get to you so uh you know pastor just just go back home and i said no i'm i, I gotta you know i thought well you know how bad can it be amen and uh, i had my two assistant pastors with me i figured i got my back up you know and and so if anything happened between the three of us we could just rambo it out you know and um and so he made me sign some waivers and right there, you know, I should have thought, but, you know, mucho uh, hueso y poco seso. I don't know how to translate. A lot of bone and very little brain. Amen. And uh, so they took me in and, uh, and it's basically a big courtyard, uh, pretty large. Um, and uh, they, they just, you know, it's whoever's the biggest, baddest, and ugliest, uh, you know, gets by. And so they opened the door, and, and they just kind of shoved me and my assistant. And we just kind of, oh, okay. And they just, whoosh, I mean, they shut that. And, and right then, uh, I just felt like danger. I just, you know, you know when you're in a spot that you know there's something wrong. And it just came over me, and I thought to myself, boy, this... This is the dumbest thing I've ever done. Amen. And I figured, well, I'm here. I might as well. So I made my way through the courtyard. And there was these big old ugly dudes. I mean, some of them just with their drawers on. And some of them not even that. And uh, tattoos and stuff. And I just kind of made my way. And my, my assistants, they, they kind of stood behind me. I thought they was, you know, protecting their good pastor that they love and adore. And... Um, and so finally, at about an, an hour and a half, I finally found the guy. He was sitting down. There was like eight guys around him. And, and I said, hey, um, I, I'm Pastor Dross. Your mother sent me to pray for you. Uh, and, and, and when he did, he looked up at me and he spoke in English. He said, Pastor, uh, you shouldn't be here. 
you're in a lot of trouble. And I was like, yeah, tell me something I don't know now. And uh, I mean, it sent a chill down my spine. And, and I was like, and, and, and it was long after that that uh, I heard this voice behind me that said, Hey, güero, ¿qué andas haciendo aquí? Mira que te voy a matar. So basically, you know, hey, white boy, what are you doing here? I'm going to kill you. And I just, oh, man. And, and, and I remember looking that away. And, and I looked that away. I looked down at myself. And I remember thinking, yeah, you know, I'm whiter than sour cream. He must be talking to me. And, uh, and so I turned around to see the biggest, ugliest Mexican you ever did see in all your life. I mean, he was big and... And he, he was ugly. I mean, it looked like they paid him to be ugly. And uh, he had, he had one of those, uh, uh, ¿cómo se llama? Bigotes. Yeah. Big old. He looked like he done swallowed a horse and the tail was sticking out. I mean, it was just huge. And, and, um, and, and all of a sudden, I was just surrounded by like 50, 60 men. And they were pushing on me and shoving and and, 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 and then I remembered my backup and I, and I turned to where they're supposed to be and, and I don't know where they went to but they was gone amen and, you know God bless assistant pastors amen and, uh, and so I looked at the door way over there and I saw my predicament and I felt fear rise within me and, um, and that, in that moment, as I was talking to this man, I had a conversation within myself. And I remember thinking, uh, I'm going to, they're, they're going to kill me. And I just resolved in my mind, I thought, well, if they're going to kill me, they're going to kill me preaching the word of God to them. At, at least that. And so I just, I just shut down that fear. Very, fear is probably one of the hardest things to shut down inside of you. And I just looked at that man and I began to preach the word of God to him. Just in a very calm manner, I said, the Bible says, he that is in Christ Jesus is a new creature. All things are passed away and all things are made brand new. I said, I don't know what you've done in the past. And I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm here to tell you, God has brought me here because he wants to make a new creature out of you. He can turn your life around. Amen. And what is more, he can make a preacher out of you. And I was just, you know, and finally, you know, I just, I got emboldened in the Holy Ghost. And, and I said, and I'm going to pray right now that God fills you with the Holy Ghost. And I just kind of shut my eyes and I reached out. And I thought, yeah, any minute now. Amen. And, uh, and, and as soon as the, the yema, the, la yema, the, the, yeah, I don't know how y'all speak this English all day. Amen. Uh, my fingertips touch his forehead. He yelled. He goes, ah! And when he did that, people were running everywhere. And I don't know why they were doing that, but they was just running everywhere and when i get to heaven i'm gonna say god what why why all that you know i don't know it's really weird and it was like we were in a bubble and uh and he looks at me he said what are you doing to me i said i'm not doing anything to you i told you god wants to get a hold of you he brought me here to pray for you he said, well, what do I do? I said, well, I've shown you some respect. You show my God respect. Get down on your knees. And he did. And I said, raise your hand. Looking at me. And, and, I, and I just began to pray. Jesus, I love you. And he goes, me too. <laughs> You're an awesome God. Me too. You know, never prayed a day in his life. And when I realized what was going on, I just began to pray and he just kept saying me too and I just said God forgive all my sins I've been a rotten hallelujah I need your spirit I need your uh, your your forgiveness I need your touch in my life and he just go me too me too and all of a sudden he broke down and the Holy Ghost got a hold of that man 
Oh, you're not hearing me. Hallelujah. You don't have to be sophisticated to talk to God. He doesn't hear your words. He hears your heart. He hears your cry. He hears what you're going through. Oh, some, sometimes you don't even know what to tell God, but God knows what you're telling him. And right there in that place, amen, it might have been an hour, I don't know. It might have been five minutes, I don't know. I just know one thing, the Holy Ghost fell in that place. And after a while, that man began to talk in other tongues right there as the Spirit gave utterance. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, if it can do that in Mexico, it can do that right here, right now. Amen. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you're facing. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past. There is power in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. He understands what you are crying. He understands the feelings of our Infirmities. Praise God. And after our, he got the Holy Ghost, then uh, other people started just kneeling down and looking at him. Amen. And I just started praying for everybody. I was all by myself. Four people got the Holy Ghost right there. Is this all right or do you want me to stop? Okay, well, come to find out this guy was so big and ugly. His nickname was Texas, <laughs> you know. So, so then I figured, well, man, what am I going to do? And I thought, well, I, I best baptize him. I don't think he's going to last the night after this. Uh, I, I better baptize him. And <laughs> once I'm, he's under, I'm just going to keep him under. <laughs> you know, send him direct. Don't give him time to backslide. <laughs> you know, and uh, I said, uh, and I explained, I said, Texas, uh, you know, uh, I, I need to baptize. He said, what do you mean? I, and I explained it to him. He said, oh, we don't have none of that. Just once a week, they hose us down from the towers. And, uh, and that's when I thought of God bless Ford, you know. I thought, I'm going to go get my horse trough. So I went out there, and I knocked on the door, and they opened up. And, and oh, I found my assistant pastors, by the way. There was a... Pastor, we was praying for you. Yeah, boy, I bet you were. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so I went out there. They, were, they weren't going to let me bring it in. And, and I said, listen, I got to. And so I paid them some money and I bought it in. I filled it up and I baptized that man in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm telling you, there is power in Jesus' name. Went back the next week. He had over 80 men waiting on me to preach the word of God to them. Went back the following week. He had over 200 men that wanted to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, when God is ready to use you, he'll use you. It doesn't matter if you've been in church all your life or haven't been at all. There is power. He can make a new creature out of you. And I'm thinking, man, this guy's growing the church faster than I am. And I thought, I'm, I'm going to figure out what he's going to do. And so I said, I'm, I'm going to stay with you all day. And, oh, man, I can't even begin to tell you the smell in that place. And uh, so, so I found out what his evangelist, who is the evangelist, uh, evangelism uh, pastor, Brother, Brother McClary. Amen. Going to take him there so he teaches him. And, and, uh, and I found out what he does. He just goes to the courtyard and points at somebody. You're coming to church today and you're getting the Holy Ghost and you're getting baptized in Jesus' name. Oh, yes, sir. Amen. I thought that won't work for me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Short evidence of it, uh, several months later, uh, the, the, the guy who's in charge of the prison says, uh, listen, we want to know what's going on. What are you doing to these men? I said, I'm not doing anything. It's the Holy Ghost. 
He said, I've talked to the governor. We want to know how we can help you. I said, well, give us some building blocks. And we're going to build a church. And to this day, I can take you to a prison in Mexico. And when you walk in, first thing you see is a big old United Pentecostal Church of Mexico. There's over 600 men that gather there four times a day. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you there's power in Jesus' name. You are a part of that. Say, I'm a part of that. Amen. You might have prayed for a Mexican missionary, never even knew my name. But, amen. When you pray for a missionary, you are a part of that. Can you say, praise the Lord. So I'm excited to be here. Hallelujah. I, I want the Mama Sita, I mean, my wife, hallelujah, to, to come up here. Amen. She's, she's my better 80%. Her parents were missionaries to Pakistan, and I met her in Bible school. I went to Bible school for one thing, not for theology, to get me a wife. Amen. <laughs> yeah. I was failing in Bible school, and my teacher said, uh, uh, Brother Dross, I'm, I'm embarrassed to tell you, but you're not doing very good. And I said, oh, <laughs> Brother uh, Foster, I, I didn't come here to get theology. I came to get me a wife, and I'm getting an A-plus in that department. Amen. Praise God. So I want her to say something. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. He's not joking. He really did come to Bible school for that. On our very first date, he asked me out, and we went out, and he sat me down, and he said, okay. He said, I'm going to be a missionary to Mexico, and I'm going to Mexico, and I'm not coming home. I'm going to live there, and I'm going to die there. So the next time I ask you out, if you're not interested in going to Mexico as a missionary, just tell me no. Our first date. But he was kind of cute. So the next time he asked me out, I thought, well, okay. <laughs> and we've been in Mexico. We got married a week after our wedding. We packed everything we owned in a little Ford Tempo, and we drove to Mexico. And we've been there ever since. So I've never lived in the United States or Canada or our entire married life has been in Mexico. But God is doing a great work there. It is a privilege to be part of what he's doing there. I know this last year has been something we never could have imagined that we would face. But you know, sometimes God takes unusual situations and he pulls us out of our comfort zones. And he says, okay, we're going to do something a little different. My husband was talking about Pentecost Sunday. This year, last year was just about a month and a half after the whole world shut down. And in Mexico, the government was, was very demanding. They, they forced us to close for a while. And so Pentecost Sunday in Mexico is always a big deal. We have the seven Super Sundays leading up to it. And we really promote getting the Holy Ghost. And we have special events. And, and we really do a lot of promotion. And so... My husband, and at that time, my father-in-law has since passed away, but at that time, he was the president, and so they were, what are we going to do? And so they decided, you know what? We can't do it physically, but we can go online. We can go Facebook Live. We can have a service. We can have a special preacher. So that's what we did. We promoted. We did all kinds of, of things leading up to it. We had his brother as an evangelist. He came down, and, uh, and we... We're in a room with about 10 people, and he preached, and we went Facebook Live. And so we had it set up where people could call. One thing that's really neat about Facebook, if you're an administrator on a page like that, there's a place you can go in, and you can look, and you can actually see where people are watching from. And so two or three days after the event, we had people calling, literally messages coming in from all over the world, all Spanish-speaking countries, um, of people receiving the Holy Ghost. They had groups together that were watching and, and people were receiving the Holy Ghost. And so I went in to look and I thought, I called my husband over. I said, look at this, babe. Every Spanish-speaking country in the world, and I'm not just talking about Mexico and the United States, all of Central America, all of South America, Spain, there's even a country in Africa where they speak Spanish. There were people that watched that service, were part of that service from every single Spanish-speaking nation in the world. Now, I don't know about you, but that gets me excited. 
Because if we if if it were not for Corona, the coronavirus, COVID-19, we probably would not have gone live and done what we did. But God was saying, you know what? We're coming down to the end. And we've got to do things a little different to reach our world. And to this after about, I think it was about a week, that that service had been watched over 60,000 times. And we received reports from all over the world of people that were filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God is doing great things, and we are the generation that's privileged to be part of it. I am so excited about what God is doing in Mexico, and I, we're walking in the door, and one of the sisters said, I'm so excited. There was 167 at Texas camp meeting that got the Holy Ghost. But people, that's just the beginning. God is getting ready to pour out his spirit in ways, and he's already doing it. And we are the ones that get to be part of it. I pray the Lord would bless you all. Brother Rodriguez mentioned my cookbook. If you all like Mexican food, there's some real good recipes in here. Even how to make homemade tortillas. Everybody likes tortillas. Okay, and if you buy one, it supports the work in Mexico. May the Lord bless you all. Praise God. Can you say praise the Lord? Well, if you'll stand with me, I, I got a, how many apostolic Pentecostals are in the building here today? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I got a, I got an aisle running sermon for you. Say amen. Hallelujah. Real apostolic Pentecostals get excited just hearing the word of God. Well, about three said Amen. You just have to read the word of God and, and, and you get excited. Amen. And I got an aisle running verse for you today. Amen. Are y'all ready for this? Praise God. Amen. I'm going to put you to the test now. If y'all don't start running the aisles when I read this scripture, you're not apostolic Pentecost. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise. Are y'all ready? Say, I'm ready. Okay, put it up there. Second Samuel chapter 5, verse 16. Amen. Second Samuel chapter 5, verse. And Elishama and Eliada and Eliphalet. Nobody's running the aisles. Amen. I, I think I I got you desprevenidos. ¿Cómo se dice desprevenidos? Uh, surprised, amen, hallelujah Aren't you glad that when we get to heaven We're all going to speak Spanish, amen, hallelujah <laughs> Praise God Here we go, here's this aisle running verse And Elishama and Eliada and Elifelet Amen, hallelujah This is what I'm going to preach on I feel the Holy Ghost in this place I'm going to preach a few minutes. Everybody say just a few minutes. Amen. And I'm trying to get my, my clock here going, but uh, iPhone is just, not, is just not working with me. Um, I'm going to speak a few minutes today. Amen. Under the subject, three powerful truths. Everybody say three powerful truths. Amen. And uh, I'm just going to preach for about 30 minutes under that subject. Three powerful truths. I'm going to give you three truths that if you will apply them to your life, it doesn't matter what you're going through in your life. It doesn't matter what you will face right now or in the future. If you can remember these three powerful truths that are in the word of God, you're going to have victory every day of your life. Praise God. Now, I only know how to preach one way. I learned how to preach in Mexico, and there's only one way we know how to preach in Mexico, and that's hot Holy Ghost chili pepper preaching. And you might think, well, what kind of preaching is that? Well, chile, you know, or peppers, uh, they, they burn. I mean, they, they burn going in, and, and they burn, uh, yeah, they, they just burn. Amen. But it's been proven that if you have any parasites, it will kill every parasite in your system. So hot Holy Ghost chili pepper preaching, kind of preaching, it'll hurt you a little bit, but it'll clean you up. Amen. Make you live right, make you talk right, make you act right. 
Amen. Anybody like that kind of preaching here today? Let's just raise our hands and talk to Jesus. Jesus, we love you. We praise you. We exalt you, Lord. We magnify your name. I pray that you'll tailor the text for the times and everything we do, be it for your glory and honor. Hallelujah. And we give you a great hand clap of praise, O oh Lord, because you are worthy, worthy, worthy. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and smile real big and say, I like your hairdo. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if he doesn't have any hair, say, I like your tie. Amen. And you may be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Brother Kevin, is it? Hallelujah. He's been trying to get me to sing. Lord, have mercy. I can't. I sound like a walrus giving birth to farming equipment when I sing. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Both everyday living and Bible show us that uh, the importance of small things. Amen. We all know so well that it's often the minor details of life that make up life. Amen. Some things that are trivial for one person might be very important for another. It's the small things of life that make or break our lives. We all know that when you sign a contract, you don't have to really be concerned about the big letters it's those little tiny letters that you have to be careful about amen court cases in america and around the world are made up by the smallest of technicality in in the law they're won amen by the smallest technicalities i've seen marriages be broken or made by the smallest of things Amen. As a matter of fact, history is, is, is full of um, uh, examples of generals that took, uh, maybe had overwhelming armies against them, but they exploited the smallest of detail to get a strategic advantage and turn defeat into victory because small things are very important. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, we've all heard. Amen. Uh, the uh, in civics class that the importance of one vote amen one vote gave America the English language over German if it wasn't for that one vote we would be speaking German today amen hallelujah a small stone correctly placed on on uh, it can derail a, a freight train small things are very important it is small bolts and nuts that uphold uh, bridges and infrastructures of of skyscrapers small things are very important small rudders can uh, guide great boats amen In the 1800s the electoral college at that time came together the u.s constitution allowed uh, provided that whoever got the most votes would become president and the runner-up would become vice president. And, and back then in the electoral college when they came together it was a tied vote and so that threw the election into the House of Representatives and by one vote margin, amen, Thomas Jefferson became our president of the United States. One vote. Small things can make a big difference. And... Uh, and if that is true in the natural realm, it's also true in the spiritual and the supernatural. Little is much when God's in it. Praise God. Hallelujah. We all know. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says, but God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. God has chosen the weak things of this world to confound that are mighty and the base things of this world to confound that that are despised that no man shall glory in his presence. He always uses small things so nobody can take, amen, the, the glory. All the glory and all the honor is unto Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God small boy came with a small lunch and gave it to jesus and fed over five thousand people because little is much when god's in it 
Goliath was defeated by David because with one small stone, hallelujah, he defeated a champion, a lifelong champion that was well armed because little is much when God's in it. Elijah saw the cloud the size of the man's palm, but there was water in that and stopped a three-year drought because little is much when God's in it. Hallelujah. And I'm here to tell you, why are you saying this, Brother Dross? Because, amen, if you find that you're small up against your problem, up against a great big world, I'm here to tell you, you are a prime candidate to be used by the kingdom of God because little is much much when God's in it can I get a witness in the house amen in Mexico hallelujah there's kidnappings all the time and there was this um, family that was very affluent and, and, and very wealthy they're still there thank 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 the Lord but uh, they were being um, uh, um, uh, threatened by the cartels that if they didn't pay a, an exorbitant amount of money that they would kidnap one of their uh, 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 family members and so they came to me and he's very wealthy he said pastor uh, I'm, I'm thinking about going and he has a house in Florida and uh, I'm thinking about taking my family we're just going to stay there till this is over uh, what do you think I said absolutely not amen hallelujah give me the money give me the keys I'll go to Florida for you and he said, well, pastor, I said, no, uh, any other time I would have agree on it, but not now. Amen. Hallelujah. This is an attack of the enemy to ruin your faith. And I'm here to tell you, I'm going to bind in prayer. Hallelujah. And we're going to overcome this in Jesus name. And you say, praise the Lord. Man, I, I was praying, and, and uh, so uh, several weeks went by, and one day, the, the little boy, he's about six years old, was riding on his bicycle, and this big old Escalade pulled up, and three men got out, and they got a hold of this little six-year-old boy, and they were about to throw him in the Escalade when they made a big mistake, amen. They uncovered his mouth, and when they uncovered this little six-year-old boy's mouth, Hallelujah. He learned the name in Sunday school. It wasn't mama. It wasn't daddy. It wasn't help me. It wasn't pastor. It wasn't uh, police. It was the name of Jesus. And he began to call upon the name of Jesus. And when he did, three men fell over. And that boy was able to get away because I'm here to tell you, little is much when God's in it. Hallelujah. Amen. Miracles can happen. Out of the mouth of baby shall God perfect praise. Is there anybody else in the house here today that knows that God can do miracles? in your small praise oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place praise God praise is contagious everybody say praise is contagious sometimes you can come to the house of the Lord and and you're upset everything's going wrong what's wrong with you my mother-in-law came to visit me and and uh, you, everything is just falling apart but you get into the house of the lord and you just start with just one foot stomping and and after a while you get both feet stomping and after a while you get your hand going and and all of a sudden what seemed like a big problem becomes a small problem because little is much when god's in it he can take your hallelujah and turn it into healing. He can take your praise the Lord and turn it into financial blessing. Hallelujah. Is there anybody in the house here that knows that God can turn my little praise into a great big victory? Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. You say praise the Lord. Little is much. When God's in it, hallelujah, little is much. 
when God's in it. Hallelujah. This little dance I do. Hallelujah. Amen. Garth Brooks didn't give me that. Hallelujah. It was the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. I've seen cancer be healed by this little dance I do. Hallelujah. I've seen, amen, demons. Hallelujah. Back up over this little dance I do. Hallelujah. Is there anybody who's got a little dance and said, I'm going to turn my defeat into victory. I'm going to turn my situation into a miracle. Hallelujah. Because God can take my praise and turn it into something. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. The Bible says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life hallelujah amen any anybody in the place here today that sometimes you're walking through walmart or or uh uh come on see i'm a target hallelujah or uh, my wife knows all these places or coals or something like that and all of a sudden hallelujah goodness and mercy get a hold of you amen and you you just break out in a crazy praise and hallelujah the news you got from your doctor just don't seem big enough anymore because God is bigger than any problem he's bigger than any situation he's bigger than any chaos in your life can you say praise the Lord this is the God I preach this is the God I serve. Hallelujah. I had these one guys come in one time. I have, I have prayer every Monday morning with all the men in my church. Uh, we, we gather to church at 5 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I do that because I don't want no women there. I just, nothing wrong with the women. You know, it's just me and the guys though. Amen. Because if I announce a prayer meeting, all the ladies show up. Yeah. I don't know in Georgia, but in Mexico, that's how it is. All the ladies show up. And I, I want to pray with the men. And I pray, God, and, and, and I don't pick up the tithes and offering on Sunday. I pick it up Monday morning when they're going to work. And I pray for them. I say, God... Give them one of those jobs that they do nothing but get paid a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. And so I was, I was at the church. Amen. And, and uh, there in Mexico, we don't have a, uh, como se llama? Uh, yeah. Man, turn to your neighbor and say that white Mexican having trouble with his English already. Amen. <laughs> Uh, it's just it just the door and, and, and the street and so I, I was at the front praying and and I heard some noise in the back and I thought oh that's just some guys coming and uh, and all of a sudden I heard uh, a gun I, I know you know what I mean when it locks and loads you know that whoosh, whoosh. and I'm like whoa I don't think they want to pay their tithes today amen and, and I looked back and it was eight men in hoods and they all were armed and they were walking towards me. I mean, just pointing their gun at me. And, and in Mexico, we got very uh, uh, strict gun laws. I, I don't have nothing. Amen. And, uh, but when all you have is Jesus. Oh, you're not hearing me. When all you have is Jesus, that's all you need. So when I saw them, I thought, they're not going to get me with, on my knees. So I got up. Amen. And I turned around and I looked at them. And the guy said, la mano, bueno. And uh, that's, uh, hey, white boy, raise your hands. And so when I did, you know, you can't tell an apostolic to raise his hands. Oh, you're not hearing me today. Hallelujah. You can't tell a one God apostolic tongue talking, pew hopping, aisle running, amen, Pentecostal saint of the most high God to raise his hand and just shut up. No, no, no. Hallelujah. I just raised my hand and I began to, I began to dance. Hallelujah. And I 
again Jesus tiene poder Jesus tiene poder Jesus has power Jesus has power and they got up uh, I, I, was, I was like right here and they got up where this guy what's your name brother brother Wilson he's a good man amen I like brother Wilson gonna take him to the prison with me amen hallelujah and he got up and he was about this far and he was looking at me and and there was another guy here and another guy there and there's like four guys and he was looking at me and uh, i was just Jesus tiene poder. Jesus tiene poder. and uh, he said let's go este güero está chisqueado you know uh chisqueado como se dice chisque? crazy amen but it's, it's like a crazy crazy Amen. He said, this white boy is crazy. And they ran out. They ran out. And when they ran out, I was like, oh, little is much when God, oh, you're not hearing me here today. Little is much when God's in it. Eight months later, everybody say eight months later, I got this phone call. Are you Pastor Dross? This lady was talking to me. Are you Pastor Dross? I said, yeah. She said, uh, would you go pray for my husband? He's in prison in Texas. I said, no. Well, aren't you a pastor? Oh, yeah, but we got pastors in Texas. No, no, no. He wants you. I said, well, no, I'm not going. Eight hour drive. I'm not going. Amen. Hallelujah. And so she called me the next day. And then she called me that afternoon. She is one of those ladies, you know. They just, ugh. You know. She said, my husband says she'll, she'll pay your gas. I, it's not about money. I'm not going. And she just kept insisting. And said, I mean, it would ring. And I was like, oh. You know. And I had to answer because it just rang and rang and rang and rang. God bless the ladies. Very insistent. Finally, I went. I went to the prison. We were talking on, on a phone. There was like this deal. Amen. And uh, he was just talking. And he said, Pastor, you don't know who I am. I said, no, no. And please tell your wife to quit calling me. He said, let me tell you something. Do you remember about eight months ago you were at the church by yourself? Amen. And, and eight men came in and they were going to take you. I said, yeah. He said, I was the one that was in front of all those guys. Everyone else has been shot and killed. I'm the last one standing. He said, and I know God is for you. I know you are legitimate because, amen, we had to run out of that place. And that's why I need you to pray for me right now. I said, okay. He said, but before you do, could you tell me who are those 10 men that came out from behind the pulpit and stood around you? I said, there was nobody there. He said, oh, yes, there was. They were big and, and we got scared. I'm here to tell you a little as much when God's in it. Come on, somebody. If you believe this message, you ought to get up on your feet and say, that's the God that I preach. That's the God that I serve. He's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Little is much. Oh. And here we have a small insignificante uh, ins uh, insignificant thank God for the mama Sita. she's the only one that understands small insignificant verse that when I first read it y'all were like go on to the next one you white Mexican Ain't nothing there. <laughs> but little is much when God is in it. These are three prince of Israel, three sons of David. 
Names back then are not like names today, you know, names to people. People give names to people for stupid reasons. I knew this guy, his last name was Bacon, middle initial P, first name Chris. <laughs> yeah. I went to school with a girl called Candace Spencer. Sounds like Candace Spencer to me, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, just crazy reasons. I, a good friend of mine, his name is Brother Black, and he says white as sour cream. Amen. Just, you know, we, we, today names don't mean what they were back then. Back then, your whole prophetic mission was all wrapped up in your name. They, they wouldn't even give you a name for several weeks until they noticed certain characteristics because a name was an extension of your personality. We hear of Rahab, the harlot. She was so named that way because her name means harlot because that's what she was. Uh, Peleg means division because in Genesis chapter 10 says that in his days the earth was divided and so they called his name Peleg, which means division. Amen. Back then, whenever something happened in their life, they all the time would put names on their children. Amen. Um, uh, uh, Ichabod. Everybody say Ichabod. The Bible says that when the Philistines took the Ark of the Covenant and, uh, and they went and told the news, Eli, Eli heard the words and heard the news and fell backward, broke his neck, and his daughter-in-law had a baby and they called the baby Ichabod, meaning no glory. It's not like today, you know. I mean, hallelujah. I got cool names, Steve, you know. Just sound Steve. <laughs> and if you don't think names are important, the Bible says neither is there salvation in any other name, for there is no other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved there were certain events in David's life that he didn't want to forget what God had done in his life and so he named his children according and every time he saw them he was reminded of the power of God's deliverance the problem with America today is that we're really quick about forgetting what God has done for us problem with America is that we are not grateful to the God that made America great. It wasn't a politician. It wasn't a political party. It was God and God alone. I hear so many people say, well, I don't know how to praise God. Well, that's dumb. I'll give you a few reasons why you ought to praise God. You woke up this morning sleeping in God's bed, wearing God's pajamas in God's house took a shower, used God's water, God's soap, God's shampoo, dried off with God's towel, put on God's car, got into God's car, used God's gas, went down to God's Starbucks, got you God's latte, hallelujah, and a God's donut, fed God's body all the while, enjoying God's sunshine and breathing God's air, and you don't know why you ought to praise him. I'm here to tell you, he's been a good God. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his mercy. So we have three sons of David. Everybody say three sons of David. Elishama. Well, let me see. I, I already said that. And I said that. And I said that. I'm, oh, man, I said that too. And Oh, here we go. Hallelujah. <laughs> Elisha, everybody say Elishama. Eliada. And Eliphalet. First name, Elishama, means God hears. That's the first truth you need to put deep down in your soul. And that is God hears your prayers. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. I'm here to tell you, God hears your prayers. He hears your worship. Can you say praise the Lord? Sometimes. Everybody say sometimes. Uh, say it again. Sometimes. 
I want to say it one more time because uh, as soon as I say the next statement, y'all are going to forget what I just told you. Say, so say sometimes. Yeah, sometimes women are smarter than men. Oh, you see, you see, somebody said all times. No, I said sometimes. Amen. Women know something about men. And uh, I don't know, they're born with this. Some girls just, you know, no les prende el foco, you know. But, uh, you know, uh, my, my wife, when she wants something from me, she knows that if you praise a man, he will go to great lengths to perform. And so when she wants something, boy, she comes in and just swinging them hips, you know. Woo, boy. I mean, and she's got that look, and I mean, she's just, and I'm like, oh, Lord. You know, and, and here, here's the problem. I know what she's doing, but I like it. <laughs> oh, is there any fellas in the house here that say, ooh, I, I know, I, whoa. Yeah, she comes up and boy, she gets my, my big old biceps and, and she whispers something like, you're my Tarzan of the jungle. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and uh, baby, have you been working out? And yeah, you know. Amen. Oh. And once she's got me all buttered up, she said, can I have the credit card? I need to go get a pair of shoes that are on sale. <laughs> and you know what I do? I give it to her. Because when you praise a man, he will perform. Oh, you're not hearing me. We're created in the image and likeness of God. God. And when you have a problem, instead of complaining, why don't you throw your hands up and say, you're my way maker. You're my miracle worker. You're my wonder. You're my God. You're my provider. And God will perform because he hears. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. He hears your complaints and he hears your praises. Can you say praise? Oh, man. Let me see what. Oh, my. I got three minutes left. Amen. And I'm just on the first one. <laughs> yeah, if the alarm sounds, I charge overtime. Amen. Everybody say, Elishama. God hears. Eliada, everybody say Eliada. God knows. Oh, you're not hearing me. God hears and God knows. He knows what you're going through. There ain't nothing caught him by surprise. I'm here to tell you, he knows what you're going through. He knows your past. He knows your present. But most of all, he knows your future. Hallelujah. He's got a plan for you. He's got a purpose for your life. God hears and God knows. You know why you shame the devil? Because you can come into this place right here full of all kinds of pain, disease, and problems, and hallelujah, circumstances that are out of your uh, 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 whatever. Uh, control hallelujah and you can still raise your hands and look up to heaven and say Jesus in spite of it all I still love you I'm still going I don't see my problem disappearing but I see my God appearing I don't know what I'm going to do but I know you're able and I love you And the devil surrounded by perfection could not do that. God hears and God knows. Can you say praise the Lord? I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Hey Amen. I've been in so many circumstances. You know, being a pastor, a supervisor, a missionary in Mexico is not easy. Hey Amen. I can be in this country pastoring a church or doing the business. I don't know. 
Hallelujah. But I know that when you're in God's perfect will, everything works out. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Here about 15 years ago, I was having problems in my upper abdomen. And so I, I went, I was uh, across the border into Texas. And, and thank God UPCI has got a good um, uh, medical uh, insurance for, for missionaries. And so I crossed over into Texas. And, uh, and I went to go see about this pain I was having. And so you know how they are. They just talk to you and tell you, you know, you got to wait in the waiting room. You get an appointment, you go and wait. And then they transition you from there to another room and you wait again. And then you go and you wait again. Just crazy. Amen. And, and, and then these people, you know, I think, I, I don't know, man. They make you undress and, and put one of those things that just doesn't close in the back, you know. Oh, 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 look here. That's it. God bless y'all. Amen. I'm going to tell this one story and I'm done. And so uh, they, the doctor comes in and he said, well, you're asking me questions. He saw my thing. He said, oh, you got insurance. Yeah, boy, his eyes just bing. Oh, well, we're going to take good care of you. Yeah, amen. Uh, he ordered all kinds of scans, you know, cat scan, uh, dog scan, squirrel scan, whale scan. I mean, every scan you can think of. Uh, I mean, I was scanned uh, parts I never even knew I had. When the stands came back, he said, Mr. Dross, come, come to the office. Um, this is before they did all that in, online and stuff. He said, come, come to the office. Bring, bring somebody with you. And boy, that sounded ominous. So he comes in and he shows me. And basically, so I don't take a lot of time. He says, you got four cancerous tumors in your, in your hígado. Yeah. Liver. Amen. One's the size of a grapefruit. And uh, he said, I said, well, what are you going to do? You go, oh, no, 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 no. They're inoperable. Uh, we could cut out most of your, but it's spread. You, you, you got six months to live at most. First thing that came to my mind was I, I felt sorry for myself. I was angry. There's just a flood. And the first thing that I thought to myself, man, the mama seat is going to get all that life insurance money and and go marry some young guy and go live on a beach somewhere. Ha! Yeah. Y'all can laugh, but you'd think the same thing too. And so we went back. And, uh, and so I had an engagement to preach in Columbia. And I told my wife, I said, babe, I think I'm just going to, I'm going to cancel. She said, oh, no, you're not. You're going to go to Columbia and preach or you'll regret it the rest of your life. I said, hello, I don't have very long to regret it. And then I thought, man, I'm not even dead and she's already trying to get rid of me. <laughs> you know, check out the next guy. I'm like, okay, I'll show her. I'll go and come back in a box. Ha, 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 you know. So I was preaching. There was, oh man, like twenty thousand people there. The pain was so horrible. I couldn't. I could. I was just. I was. I was preaching like this. I would just hold on to the pulpit and I would preach like this. And uh, and it was so bad. I just. I remember just shutting my eyes. And something from deep inside of me said, "God, if if I mean anything to you, just." Help me get through this message. That's all I ask. And he says, you know, God's very, very direct with me. He says, hey, you white Mexican, what are you preaching on? And I was preaching, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. He said, that's not for, that's for you. And I thought, yeah, that's true. I've been a praiser all my life. And I put my hands on those tumors and I began to speak to those tumors. I said, I've been a praiser all my life. And if you're going to be part of my body, you will, you will worship God with me now. 
And I just began to preach, and, and man, it just hurt so bad. I, I can't even begin to tell you how much it hurt. And, and all of a sudden, uh, my, sh my, sh uh, mi camisa, como, my shirt went like this, and there was this, this sound. It went like a matraca, you know, just rah, like that. And I know it was loud because, you know, there were some people around there, uh, amen, and the preaching, and they just kind of backed up. They, you know, they thought I'd done something up there. Amen. It was kind of embarrassing. Amen. <laughs> you know, and I, no, it wasn't me. Amen. <laughs> and, 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 and I remember thinking, I think I just ripped my liver. I'm going to die. And I thought, well, it won't be long now. I'll just keep preaching till I kill over and die. Well, I kept preaching and uh, didn't die. Hallelujah. So when I got back to Mexico, I crossed over into Texas. I was living on the border. And uh, I, I went, you know how they do. They wait in the waiting room. In the waiting room, ugh, I mean, you know. And so, and so I'm, I'm, like, I'm like standing here pacing back and forth. And uh, doctor comes in. And I said, doctor, I ripped my liver apart. And he just looked at me. He didn't say it, but he looked at you dumb you know he said pastor dross you can't do that i said oh if anybody could i can and then he got my and he saw oh you got insurance you know how they just oh boy i mean their their eyes just really glitter and uh so they got all the scans and when they came back he said uh, mr dross i don't know what's we're gonna have to do these scans again i said what, what's going on he says i don't know how to tell you that i'm just gonna tell you we can't find the cancer anymore. <laughs> God hears and God knows. Why don't you stand to your feet? Elishama, God hears. Eliada, God knows. And everybody say Elifelet. Uh, my time is over. I don't know if you all want to hear the last point. Are you sure? I'm charging overtime. Amen. Elishama, God hears. Eliada, God knows. And Elifelet means God delivers. <laughs> God hears. God knows. And God delivers. I'm here to tell you, he'll deliver you. He'll deliver you. Just think for a minute in the life of day in the life of David, Philistines have invaded, crops are burning, riots in the streets. He's thinking, what am I going to do? He goes home with all the affairs of state on his mind. The door opens and here's this little three-year-old kid comes running out. Daddy. And he remembers Elishama, God hears. And when he's reminded of that, all of a sudden, here comes another kid running out. And he remembers, Eliada, God knows. <laughs> and then here comes mama carrying a little Eli, Eli, Eli fillet. And he's remembered, God hears, God knows, and God delivers.